uh, I, I went to Elam Art School. I've been working as a painter for about 40 years. Um, and it really is pretty much everything in my life. So I read about art, I think about art, and I look at a lot of art around the world, and, and that is really a dedication. Um, so I've, I've been, for the last, uh, about the last 20 years, I've been spending quite a lot of time in Europe. And I was in Europe last year and felt a lot of pressure in the world. I felt that there was pressure building is the only way I can describe it. Um, there was a lot of things going on politically that I was experiencing, and there were seemed to be thoughts in the air. And I had decided that I wanted to really test myself with a big um, painting to somehow release that, the pressure in myself that I felt from these different circumstances going on in the world. Of course, I had no idea what was going to happen in 2020. Um, it was uh, the pressure released in more more profound way than I could have guessed at the time. But I started to prepare the work with these small works that you see around the, around the room. I produced about um, 50 to 60 preparatory works, just preparing myself to make a, a, a very large work. And I like to shift very much between scales. So when I make a small work, I think of myself as very small. And when I make a large work, I have to make myself very big. But this sort of a little bit like working in the same, in the same field, of course, it's, I had a small studio where I was in Europe, so um, it made sense to work on a quite a small scale and develop something. But when I came back to New Zealand, uh, middle of la last year, I put it this, uh, the largest canvas I could fit on my studio floor and wanted to make the most direct painting I could. Because if you know my work at all, uh, which some of you well may, well may know, uh, I often am involved in quite complex processes of putting paint on and then removing paint. So it becomes a, a complex process of almost carving into the paint and taking paint away and there I'm left with the image. In this instance, I've painted very directly with acrylic paint and brushes. So it's a, um, an unusual painting for me, but I wanted to express this pressure I felt in the most direct, direct way I could. So I paint flat on the floor. Um, I wanted the, the work to start with gray and white. I thought about it a little bit like a film. So starting with black and, a black and white film, that would then sort of go into this void and then explode in color. And I wanted it to be like a, um, an explosion or a ripping apart. Um, it, it always, uh, I love paintings of, um, many painters have painted um, shipwrecks and storms, um, events where a lot of energy is released in the world, volcanoes erupting, so all of those things were very much in my mind when I was painting the work. I thought of it like a big shipwreck. Um, and I wanted it to, to have this kind of void in the center and to have the feeling that it was a kind of ongoing um, event. So many people ask me how I'm, I'm inspired or how I get going. But of course, when you work over a long period of time, you start, you do something, and you do something else, and that makes you do something else. So it becomes this long linkage or chain of events, which can be very difficult to then go back and think about what you have done and, and how you did get to a place. So you're really led on, I'm really led on by the, the, act of, the act of painting, the act of paint itself, the materials you use, and the history that other people, what other people have done that you take up and try and move on to somewhere else. Uh, you know, I also get asked why I work so big, um, because I think for me I want painting to be not just an experience of looking, but a real experience of, of a bodily feeling. Um, painting is one of the is is, an, is something that involves both the body in a very physical way and the mind, and that's what I love about it so much. That you don't just uh, think a painting and you don't just perform a painting, but it's a real act of these things coming together. So it becomes a very holistic experience. And I want to convey that to the viewer. 
that you are somehow transported both physically and mentally, um, that you're pushed to make new connections, new connections with all those aspects of um, our existence of being alive, what it means to be alive. So when I was working with um, working on these much smaller preparatory works, the one on the end you'll see this kind of hole like a donut um, started to emerge, and many of them had this aspect. And I got very interested in having um, a, like a big open breather space in the painting. So this is how it, it evolved, and this is how it came about. So it, I always tr I'm trying to. Th to make a painting that has no beginning and no end and has this deep spatial, um, without using um, recognizable objects in a space, it's difficult to build a complex pictorial space. Like so, a void, sorry. Like... Yeah, the void. So the, so the void creates the space, you know, helps create this, this deep space. Um, and also sets up this thing that is a bit like a donut space where you go around and around and you and can never really find the beginning or the end. So it's hard to know whether the, the, the void is the beginning of the work or in the middle of the work or it's, it's, a, it's just a point, a breather point, which you keep coming back to. So this idea that a painting could be an energy flow or um, inspire this kind of energy flow is quite important to me. It's, it's how I really measure painting. When I look at a painting, it's, the question is, does it flow? You know, does it flow or does it not flow?